Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about how to use Constraint Manager inside AllCAD Capture or Capture CIS. So traditionally, um, net-based properties would be added directly onto the wires or the nets. So you could double-click a wire or a net, and you would then see that the property. So in this example, it's got an impedance rule. Um, you could also add things like you know um, propagation delays and net net physical type, net spacing type, min line width, etc. Um, and these would be set directly on the nets, but come in as like a net override. Um, but the better method would be to obviously apply these directly in Constraint Manager. So people used to do this traditionally, they'd send the net list or the design sync into PCB Editor and then have all the rules set there. Um, we now have the ability to launch uh, or set the constraints in Constraint Manager directly from AllCAD Capture. So if we have a quick look at this design first, we'll just do an edit object properties. We'll look at the schematic nets. You can see, um, let's just go to the current properties. Um, you can see obviously some of these nets. So there's we've got propagation delay on a couple, um, we've got impedance on a couple, and then we've got a, a differential pair here with some a differential pair and some differential pair rules as well. So, um, what we're going to do is when we transfer this into a constraint manager driven flow. Um, these properties will no longer be um, available to be edited by the, the, the edit properties. Everything will be done through Constraint Manager. This is key to know that if you do launch Constraint Manager in a design, that's it. It kind of it locks the design down into the Constraint Manager flow. So to launch the Constraint Manager flow, we effectively select the design name and we can either access it from this uh, Constraint Manager icon here or we can use the PCB Constraint Manager. <clears throat> so we're getting a a note about what you need to do uh, to go into this and obviously you can disable this note once you start to understand what's happening um, I'm going to leave it as it is for now so I'll click OK to that so I've got three options don't migrate the constraints um, migrate for constraints with a, an existing PCB so in that scenario I'd have to back annotate and um, or, or design sync the, the the properties from the board back to the schematic um, I'll show an example of that later on for this example um, I don't have a PCB yet so we're just going to start, we're going to take the, take the constraints in the schematic and just go and, uh, and launch Constraint Manager. So I'm going to set the units that I want to use. In this example, it's going to be millimeters to four decimal places. We'll click OK. And the first time I click OK here, it's uh, going to give me the option to set some voltage nets. So these are my, my power nets in the design and I can actually set the voltages that apply to these. Um, you can either accept the defaults or you can just manually override these. So in this scenario, I'm just going to manually override a couple um, and then we'll click OK. <clears throat> that then launches Constraint Manager. So I now have a Constraint Manager here. So if I look at the electrical constraints, um, propagation delays, you can see that those two nets there had some propagation delays and so it's brought those in. If I look at the differential pair, I've got some coupling parameters here. I've got a differential pair created. Um, physical and spacing at the moment, um, it's not stack up aware. So it's just giving me a blank effectively uh, physical constraint set. Um, and a, a default kind of a list, list of all my nets. So what I can do here is I can actually import a technology file. These can be generated out of Constraint Manager. So if you have a box standard set of you know two layer board, four layer board, six layer board, etc., you can bring in the number of, of, of layers that you've got and then start to create physical and spacing rules. So I can go file, import technology file. I can then browse where my technology file is here. Um, and I've obviously got options to either overwrite, replace or merge. So I'm just going to um, replace these and then I'll then bring in my uh, constraints. So it's brought in effectively a, uh, a stack up. And if I look here now, I've effectively got a four layer board with some default rules. So I can start to set some rules here. Maybe I want my default tracking gap from my track to be 0.25. I'll leave the rest as they are. I'll create a new physical rule here. So we'll create a power physical rule. Maybe set this at half a millimeter. And then I can start to maybe look at applying this to some of my nets. So I can either do this in, well, let's go, in fact, let's go and make a differential pair rule as well. So we'll create a differential pair rule. Um, and if I have my track thickness at maybe uh, 0.22, and my primary gap of 0.2 with a tolerance of 0.05, and then we'll set a midline spacing. I can then start to apply those rules. So my differential pair is going to use the differential pair rule here. And what we'll do is we'll just clear these overrides. 
So let's uh, So we're now using the differential pair all there. Um, we'll make a, a net class of my power nets. So I've got a ground and so we'll do a right click create a class and we'll set uh, my power rule for those. Uh, maybe let's go and set the spacing rules as well. Let's just go and set all these to be um, point 0.2. Okay, that's good enough. So I've made a few changes there. In fact, let's actually go and make a, an electrical constraint. So we'll go to a propagation delay. We'll make a match group as well. So we'll drag select these and we will create a match group. We'll call match group one. And we'll set this to be zero colon uh, a millimeter. So once I've set on my constraints, I can then uh, save my design and then we'll run something called design sync. So uh, PCB will look at the design sync setup option first. Uh, let's just make sure we've got some default options for what we are opening. That looks okay. So we'll then run design sync. Um, there are the options there. This will then launch. You can see this constraints getting transferred. It's, it's launching PCB editor. I'll get the license picker up. And in my design here, I can go to constraint manager in PCB editor. So let's have a look here. I've got uh, this my match group there. If I go to um, my physical rules, there's my physical rules. There's my power, my differential pair rules. So it's actually brought the information in directly from uh, AllCAD Capture. If I make a change here, so let's just go and maybe um, let's go and increase the size of the power rule to maybe 0.7, and we will go and uh, create a new spacing rule as well. Let's call it a one millimeter gap, and we'll set all these to a millimeter. So then we can then go back to uh, capture, we'll launch design sync. This scenario will go from layout to schematic. And then we'll synchronize this. And let's bring in the different report. So it's, it's changed some constraint sets, a physical and a spacing. So if I then launch constraint manager now, and we look at the physical rules, uh, my power rule's gone up to 0.7 and I now have a spacing rule of a one millimeter gap. Okay, in this next scenario, um, I'm going to um, take a design that already has an existing PCB. There's some constraints set in PCB editor and I want to bring that back into the AllCAD Capture Constraint Manager. So we're gonna turn the schematic into a Constraint Manager flow. So we would use the same methodology. Um, we would launch the Constraint Manager. I'm gonna Get the the default warning about the enabling of constraint manager i then have to pick which which mode i want to do so before we did the the migrate constraints without a design now we're going to do migrate constraints with a design um, and it gives me the steps so i need to run design sync from schematic to pcb i need to run design sync from from layout back to schematic and then i need to then open constraint manager so we'll click ok to that and we'll set the power nets as we did before um, we're now ready to uh, run design sync. So I'll select the design name and then we'll launch design sync. So I'm just going to um, browse just to confirm I've got the correct board file. So I want to go to um, my Allegro folder. There's my board file. So I'm happy with that. We're then going to synchronize this. And we'll close the report. And obviously there's my PCB. And then what we can do then is we'll then run design sync again. I'm then gonna flip this round. So I'm gonna go from layout to schematic. And we'll click on the synchronize button. So I get a different report showing that there's a list of all the constraints that it's bringing back in. 
If we then close that, we can then click on the Constraint Manager icon and I'll get Constraint Manager. And if we start to look in here, you can see there's all my buses, my differential pairs. Uh, I've got some impedance rules. All my, all my settings are effectively being brought back from, from PCB back into uh, the schematic so I can now access Constraint Manager in the front end.